Okay, I thought I'd talk about paddles today because there's a couple of interesting paddles here. And I think most people would recognize this as an ordinary canoe paddle, probably developed uh, by North American Indian groups. Uh, very seldom are these ornamented. They're usually just finished plain. Sometimes there'll be some fancy painting on them, but they're not, they're not ordinarily very well carved. But I came across a couple of other paddles which are different, but they're paddles, they're canoe paddles. And these are right here. It's a pair of paddles. Look a little bit different, but they're clearly paddles. They have broad blades that increase in size coming to the bottom. They have an, an unusual handle. The handle is sort of shaped like an inverted U and highly carved rope carving and little uh, distinctive carving pieces periodically along the, the shaft and then along the blade. Uh, there are sort of curly cues that are carved into it. The edges of the blade are carved more thinly than the center which has a mid-rib going down the side and they're both both are the same both very symmetrical they're carved the same on both sides uh, and after I found these I had to figure out what they were and I finally did, uh, was able to do that through the magic of the internet and what they are are wedding paddles these paddles are used in wedding ceremonies in of all places Borneo now, Borneo is one of the largest islands in the group of islands that make up Indonesia. So if you thought of the other side of the world from here, and you think of Australia, the Philippines, New Guinea, Indonesia is, is right in that area. The main islands of Indonesia include Sumatra and Java, which we hear a lot about. Uh, but this is Borneo. Borneo is kind of a, it's a big island, much larger than the others. It's kind of hilly, a lot of water, uh, and it has a history which is sort of interesting for the jungles and the types of animals which are there, which are unique in many cases. But <clears throat> the people in Borneo that made these paddles are known as Dayak people, D-A-Y-A-K. And these people have a history of some pretty nasty behavior in their background. And in the old days, by the old days, I mean before uh, the early 1800s, they were headhunters. So they went out and cut people's heads off and brought them home, put them in straw baskets, and then hung around their houses as decoration. You know, kind of bizarre. But these Dayak people uh, didn't get along too well with each other, so they, they formed small communities. And these communities were isolated from each other because they didn't like each other. So they developed different languages, and there are among this Dayak culture in Borneo about 60 different languages that they use, and it's, it's sort of weird. But one of their ceremonies in one or two of those Dayak communities was a wedding uh, ceremony, whereby the bride who had chosen the fellow she was going to marry, based in the old days on the quality of the heads he brought home, but uh, the... Uh, the wedding was arranged, and then uh, the husband-to-be uh, would paddle a canoe, usually right up to the bride's home. And he'd bring his canoe with one of these paddles, and she would have another paddle that was the matching paddle, and they would have the wedding ceremony, and after the ceremony, they would get in the canoe with the two of them, and now paddle off in, into their life. So these, and these, uh, these paddles would be kept as keepsakes, as mementos of, of the wedding. So that's uh, one of the stories, at least, behind these, these paddles. They're quite unusual. Uh, we don't, I was unable to find any examples of these in the United States in various museums. There are some which are found in the British Museum in England, but they're kind of rare things, and especially with this ornamentation. Ones that I found uh, examples of are not nearly as highly ornamented as these, so they're, they're kind of special. And uh, I thought you might like to take a look at them for that reason.